All right. Easy, lad. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. What's it's happening? Been a long time. It's been a long time. How long has it been, man? I don't know. It's been well, a good couple of months, hasn't it? At least a month and a half. Must have been. Like have you got it your beer? Must have been. First and foremost, have you got your beer ready? I have, and this time, right, I'm going to show you my beer because I can't see us getting a sponsor from the Caribbean. And this reminds me of my wife's uh, family. It's called the Carib. Oh, wow. Um, where'd you get them? Um, I think, um, well, I'd mentioned the store, but no one sponsors us, so I can't tell you the store. But it, if they did it, want to sponsor us, I'd tell you the store where I got it from. Yeah. But it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a popular store, honestly. But there's like a section mm. for Caribbean food. Um, is there? Um, you know, snacks and drinks. And this one is uh, where Grenada, where my wife's family are from. I drink that when I go there, oh. so I've got it, and I'm going to drink it today. I'm jealous. I actually, I, I think I remember trying that, and I love it. I just don't know where I can get one from. You've got one as well! <laughs> I don't believe it! I don't, do you know what? People are going to think we've set that up. That's unbelievable. No. Well, I to be fair, though, if anyone listening, we never set that up. I got this the other day when I was shopping because Michelle's parents are over from the Caribbean and they're staying here in the lodge. They've gone today, obviously. But um, I, thought, I saw him in his basket when he was shopping. I said, like, where have you got them from? He said, on the shelf around there. So I ran around and grabbed myself a few and I thought I'll have them for the pod. Cheers, to, to be fair, cheers, pal. Cheers. Have a swig. Cheers. Yeah. To be fair, you did say, oh, they're what I drink when I'm in the Caribbean. And I was like, well, <laughs> yes. That's where I am. I can't admit, honestly, I can't believe it's the same drink. And honestly, anyone listening or watching, we never planned that. That's 100%. <laughs> I love how excited you are by it, though. We've got the same beer. Fuck <laughs> hell, hooray. <laughs> it's all working out. The sun is not a lot, does it? It <laughs> doesn't take much. You know, I'm a simple person, yeah. Ralph. Tiny things for these tiny minds, as you know. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So um, how's it been, mate? You've got to fill me in, man. You've been out there now for, it seems like, an eternity shooting that show. How's it going? I know. Yeah, it's going great, actually. Um, I've said it before, it's physically demanding just because every day is hot and by the end of the day, you're not gonna... I am sleeping. So my, my, um, my missus came over and she's been with me for uh, uh, about three weeks now. And so uh, <laughs> I get home from work. She's like, hey, do you want to go out and do something? I'm like, I mean, I, I guess we go and do something. Gets to about eight, half eight. And I'm, I'm starting to nod like this, fall asleep. Because usually we're up at like yeah. half five. And then, um, and, and the heat is just hot, right? And I'm like, I'm like my granddad. My granddad used to just nod off in the summertime in the garden, right? And, you know and at weekends, yeah, and at week, weekends, I'm like, right, okay. I'll sleep for Friday night. I'll go to bed. I won't get up. I'll have like 10 hours sleep. Saturday night, I'll have 10 hours sleep. Sunday afternoon, I'll be watching TV. I'm like, ah, <laughs> on the sofa, just gone. So you don't go out for drinks or anything? Well, everywhere's been locked down. That's the problem. It's been quite difficult here. For oh, the is last it still years. like that then? Oh, yeah. Well, it wasn't when I arrived. It wasn't when I arrived. But like, um, I think three or four weeks ago, the cases went up, COVID cases went up. And um, uh, the government just said, right, you're done. The curfew started. There's been a literal curfew. So no, no um, bars have been able to open or restaurants. Um, and you, you're only allowed to go, uh, what is it? You're allowed to go five kilometers away from where you officially live to buy, to buy groceries or whatever. You're not allowed to go out on a boat or anything like that. And, um, and, Why, uh, a boat? Uh, Why can't you go out I don't, on I, a boat? I, I guess they think that people will go on big groups. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dolphins, well, dolphins might get I thought COVID. you meant like you on your own can't go out rowing. Well, well do you know what? I don't even know what I don't even know what the rule is about that. But I think like unless you can prove it's your livelihood, I think you're not supposed to go out on a boat at all, not for like a, for a pleasure cruise or anything like that. So yeah, so like wow. it's all been it's all been yeah locked down. So we've not been able to go anywhere. Um, so it's basically sit at home and uh, and watch TV and have a beer and fall asleep. And to be honest, it's been quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, good, but um, so the, there was a curfew. The curfew started at, um, the curfew originally was 9 p.m., then it came down to 8, then it came down to 7. So you had to be in your house by 7 p.m. We were finishing filming at like half six, half six, quarter to seven. We're like, right, we've got to rush oh, home. Mate. Now, luckily, we had like oh, an exception to be able to go and sort of buy stuff. But yeah, so that's why I've not been out and about because while my missus has been here, she's sort of picked a, a, a difficult time to come. So yeah, you don't have to be too jealous. It's not all roses here. Uh, we have been locked locked in, but I have been locked in. Don't want to see your view. Your view can piss yeah. right off. I don't need to see it. 
Right, so exactly. Like so you're locked down, but you can look at that with a beer in your hand, can't you? <laughs> well, yeah, it's not so too, in a every, every cloud, every cloud. <laughs> no, hammock. mate, there's no, mate, there's no clouds. <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> Just blue skies. <laughs> what um, about you? Mate. What have you been up to? Loads. Well, um, there's loads of stuff been happening. I mean, I've obviously been shooting Coronation Street. Um, we're doing this the Super Salt Week. Uh, where my character right. Harvey comes, breaks out of prison and goes after the people that sent him down. Jane Danson's character, Le- Leanne Battersby's, uh, and they all testified against him, sent him down, um, <clears throat> um, and then he's, he wangles away to try and, to break out of the prison van while he's going to hospital, breaks his hand on purpose and all that. Anyway, breaks out, and he goes after to try and um, get the people that sent him down and kill him or whatever. Uh, and before Amazing. He, get out of the country. Yeah, so it's like a super soul week. So they, what they do is all the money they obviously didn't spend through COVID or they usually would spend, they, they couldn't do it. So they threw a load of money at it and they've, um, is, uh, yeah, there's a load of, it's like big storyline. So it's like, it's like the usual Coronation Street, proper ramped up. So it's it's a bit more epic. and they spend So, a so when's, on when's that out? That sounds amazing. It's out uh, next week. Uh, so depending on when this goes out. So uh, next week, the 18th um, of October, uh, is the, wow. It started last night, so the Friday, but the, the full week starts next week. So, but I tell you what, this is it is amazing and it looks great. And I was, I, they asked me to come back to do it, and I said yeah because the character wasn't properly finished. It was I got yeah, you just arrested a bit quick in the stuff. Well, I got arrested and it was over. But then they said we're going to break you out, and then you're going to you're going to go after the people that sent you down, and um, and 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 obviously now as well because COVID restrictions have relaxed a little bit, we could do. Uh, PCR bubbles, so we had we all mm-hmm. we got tested. Who was going to be in the scenes together, and then we was in a bubble, so we could get close in scenes, which makes the scenes uh, even. Yeah, because yeah. Street's been two meters apart for so long now. People are getting a bit sick of watching it like that, and I think, you know, as soon as we get closer, that'll be something. Go, oh, they're close together. Can they, you know? Yeah, and then all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. somewhere else. And also, well, and also you, you well, play. You can yeah, you play in that part. You, you want to be able to be physically intimidating and get right up in people's faces and stuff, right? Exactly. And and it's not just what you're saying. It's the physical side of it. And we can do that. But this is the thing. Because it's all epic and that, they've written it so it's in a constant thunderstorm. So it's thunder and lightning storms. So we've been in under rain. Well, obviously, <laughs> fire brigade, <laughs> rain bars for... For weeks <laughs> till five and six o'clock in the morning on night shoots, piss wet through, freezing, literally freezing. I mean, uh, it sound, like I, I said, yours sounded like not glamorous, but fucking hell, still well, in the Salford, piss wet through till six in the morning. That's not glamorous. <laughs> I've got to say, suddenly I was a bit like, when about five minutes ago, and I was going, it is quite, it can get quite hot and it's physically demanding. And I'm like, yeah, fair enough, it's much better. <laughs> Mate, honest to God, it was literally uh, me and Jane, we were filming scenes and they had wind machines, they got lightning going off, rain bars. And also, remember this, if you're going into the scene, continuity means you have to be wet because, so yeah, they wet you down before you even start your scene. So you stood there while someone's spraying you down. Honest yeah. to God, there's nothing worse, especially when you're tired. You know, it's like half four, five in the morning, and someone goes, "Right, I'm just got to wet you down." And you just felt like going, "Right, just for one minute, can you fuck off? Don't wet me <laughs> down anymore." You know what I mean? There's well, a part of you that does that, but then fun, you know it's fun, your job. So, funnily enough, last week um, I have a, uh, I was saying basically, I don't think it's a spoiler. I'm not giving anything away to say, but basically, fully, fully clothed, Neville, my character, he's tripped up, he falls into a pool, right? At, at night, falls into a pool. And, you know, I'm like, oh, this is going to be awful or whatever. Fully clothed and anything. Anyway, I do the thing. I fall into the pool. Like when you fell into the canal in, in two bites or like you, you, you're having to get wet down, right? And I just sat in there and they went, cut. And I went, this is the warmest. But it was the most comfortable thing you've ever known. None of this rain bar. None of this getting freezing cold at two in the morning. I was just like, this yeah. is great. And they went, okay, Ralph, we're going to go again. Um... Uh, can we get a costume to wet you down? I'm like, no worries. I'll just get in the pool again. Got in the pool, came back out. Mate, it was amazing. I've never been more comfortable That's... on a set than fully clothed in yeah. that pool. <laughs> That's the opposite of how we felt. Yeah, I bet. It was... Oh. But do you know what? I, I, I know it's going to look good and it's going to add to the effect of it. And it's also shot around Halloween, so everyone's in fancy dress. And there's a, there's a bit of a story about that as well, that, you know, that... that um, well, there's stuff going on, people are not sure whether it's part of the Halloween thing or if it's real that's happening, you know what I mean? So that's why right, right. people aren't jumping to save people because they think, oh, they're part of it, and it's not, it's real. Oh, uh, that's so quite cool. 
No, there is some good stuff. It's called Horonation Street. Oh, very yeah, nice. See what, they've, see what nice. they've done there, yeah. Oh, because um, it's Halloween. Yeah, no, it's, uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's been really good. The only, pro- the only problem is with it is <clears throat> I've developed chronic sinusitis. Um, what? I had to go to the doctors. Oh, my God. I've had it for ages now. Uh, chronic sinusitis. Because I got a head cold from, do you know, and, I, and I'd had it for ages. I, do you know, you keep taking painkillers. I had this pain between my eyes. And, I, and I'm using these sprays up my nose, and it was, just wasn't going. Um, and then I did all that, and can you imagine, all that water in your head, your head banging, and then mm. I, felt, I felt all right when it was freezing cold, then you go at night, and it blocks up to get anyway. So from all that, with it, it's obviously not helped to it. I've got a massive head cold, chronic sinusitis, um, and I didn't know what it was, right? So I told my missus, I said, I've got this pain be, behind my eyes. I was worried about, I thought, what if I've got a brain tumor or something? Or, do, you know, do you know, you start thinking the worst. That's not funny. And, I, and the worst thing you can do is start Googling it, right? Oh, <laughs> never Google. My <laughs> missus, Will, my missus is a, is a fucking health Googler, anything. Like the small, oh, oh, I've got, like, there was one point, right? She had... It was about a year into going out with her, and she had like she had a bit of a stomach ache and, and, and whatever, and, and you know it was it was nothing. She had a bit of a like a, a a bug or something. But she starts googling, and then when she started going down this Google rabbit hole, and she's like, well, it could be this, and it could be that, and it could be. Then she was convinced she was getting ALS. She was going to get locked in syndrome, right? And then she starts going, oh. The, the edge of my fingernails are a little bit yellow. That must mean something. It was like, no, you've just not cleaned off the nail varnish properly, you nutcase. Yeah, right? well, but she honestly was... Uh, <laughs> why would it be yellow? <laughs> what do you think I've had? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. dear. Back to serious uh, conversations. That's Sorry. just you trying, to get, that's you trying to get me back for brownie points. Anyway, go on. Exactly. That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I still get a few tweets about that every now and again. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about it that way, but now I do every time I hear it. That's what people always say to me. <laughs> I know. Mich- Michelle t- tweeted me a few times. She goes, absolutely not. I want to be very clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, do you know what you were saying about Googling it? Well, this yeah. is what Michelle did. Because I be- and I went, and Michelle said, I found out what it could be, right? She showed me a video, oh, no. right? This is what she showed me a video of. And this is, I'll, 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 I'll describe it perfectly for you. It was a doctor or a surgeon or so, of some kind pulling out of someone's nose what you could only describe as fish. Like oh. anchovies, right? Oh, Like why? slimy, oh. long fish oh. things. And I thought, oh, why would you get... show me that? Honest to God, they pulled out. It was about, must be about three inches long, these, like, they look like anchovies. And what, was, oh, what were they? been in this woman's... I don't know. I, t- I just got to look away. So I thought, for one minute, I'm going from... I could have a sinus problem, I could have a brain tumor, and now I've got a fucking aquarium in my face. I was oh. like, what's going on? I don't want oh. that. I think oh, I, don't know, no. I don't know what would be better, honest to God. And do you know, that's the problem with Google. It, it shows you any kind of potential thing. So you yeah. can see, from, it, it might just be a... The worst a, case problem. scenario. But then it goes right the way to fish in your face. I mean, what? I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> no, me neither. It was these big, do you ever get long, a- slimy things. Do you ever get that thing? Um, oh, you don't really swim in the sea, do you? You're not not a fan of the sea. No, the sea doesn't like us. I've told you that before. We don't belong here. Yeah, yeah, fair we enough. Well, I, I get this thing. I was just going to ask you if you get it, but I'm sure you probably haven't. But I get this thing. If I've ever scuba dived, even though you've got like a mask on or whatever, you still over like the hour or whatever, you get a bit of like, you might get some water in your nose or whatever. Or here, there's a beach where the waves come crashing in. And uh, mate, it's a, this is this is the only job in the world. This is the only TV job in the world. Well, maybe not in the world, but this is the only TV job I know of where, if we're filming at the shack, Neville's shack, which is right <laughs> on the beach, usually the waves come crashing in. And if you've got an hour for lunch, then you just go right. I'm going to have lunch, and then I'm going to get in, into my trunks. And in the middle of lunch, right next to the film set, I'm just going to go and swim in the sea. But what happens is I like to just jump with the waves and sort of body surf them in. And it, it gets quite quite dicey. Anyway, long and short of it is, you can get a bit of, quite a bit of water up your nose. And because, <laughs> because my nose is so wonky, it gets stuck up there. And about an hour later, it just comes out. And I'm talking about, it's like someone's turned on a tap. It's really... <laughs> It's really weird. I'm not talking about three drips come out. I'm talking about suddenly I'll be having a conversation and suddenly it goes, <laughs> like out of my nose. Like you're pouring it out of a cup. 
honestly. And I'm like, there's got to have been half a pint in there. So yeah, so at least it's not fish. Yeah, fuck that. I mean, you could get fish up yours. You you could easily get some some kind of conger eel up there. No oh, doubt. Only if, yeah, I was going to say, only if it's very bendy and it can get around the, the wonky oh, yeah. bits. Yeah, you've probably got three or four up there now. You just to, don't even know be, about it. To be fair, listen. Yeah, I know you're saying something. Yours is very straight, but you've got you've still got quite a conk on you. I know, I know I do. I don't know, I've got away with saying it for so long. <laughs> I know, yeah. I was like, all these years I've been like, wait a second, Will's been calling me an African grey for years. <laughs> but look at the conk on him. I am look at that, you look, you look like a concord. It is definitely big. The kids were saying it last night, I went out for the theatre, I went to see Back to the Future last night, you know, the musical Back uh-huh. to the Future in mm-hmm. London. A bit pissed off, I had to pay 90 quid a ticket. Fucking hell. A £90 a ticket? I, I mean, I just, I'm just i not going off piece here, but I just think, how can... Do you know, like, if, unless you earn decent money... I mean, I'm thinking, how do people go to the theatre anymore? You know what I mean? Not You've yet, got to right, earn a lot of money to be able to go. And, I, and it's a lot of money. A now. lot of money. A lot of money. Well, it was £89.50, so it cost me 360 oh, well, quid for four of us. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And I just think yeah. that's a lot of money and I just think that's not right. Theatre should be for everybody, you know what I mean? It, yeah. But agreed. anyway, the show the show was what I would call effects heavy. So the effects were amazing, like goose pimples, amazing. The air stood on end, it was yeah. like, wow. Especially with the I, car I, 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 and all that. And quick quick question. How how was, was George McFly? Was he good? Best thing in it. Really? That's amazing. Best thing in it. He, I, I know he's a, he's a mate. He was out here last series, played one of the posh Best lads last series, it. and he was going. He was going. Yeah, I'm playing George McFly, but um, uh, but uh, 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 the um, uh, the show's been you know can- not cancelled. The show's been postponed because of COVID and whatever. So yeah. yeah, I was really looking forward to it. But um, and I sort of looked at him, and he's got sort of quite an angular face and like got the hair and everything. And I was like, oh yeah, I could see that. So Brilliant. so uh, this is the first I've heard about it. And you said he was the best thing in it. Best thing in it, he made me laugh all the way through. Not only that, he didn't break character. Even uh, even when he was doing stuff, obviously, because it's a musical. The music is yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a musical, so you go because of nostalgia, the story. And uh, Marty McFly sounded a bit like Marty McFly, the Doctor. Yeah. He's a famous Hollywood star, but he, I think he was trying to ham it up a bit too much. That was my opinion. But then George McFly was brilliant. I loved him really? from start to end. He was fantastic. Best thing in it. Um, but wow. the, what I was getting to is, we went to the theatre anyway. My point of what I was saying was, on the train, because we got the tube in, we got on the train in, train out, um, the kids were all looking at each other's noses. And because Michelle hasn't got hardly any bridge, obviously, and my, yeah. I've got loads of bridge. So I said, You're lucky because <laughs> between the two of us, you, you've got a perfect size nose. An average head. bridge. Dad, <laughs> yeah. yeah, your dad, your nose comes out of your forehead. <laughs> You've got it's quite a, it's a like con- Hercules. It just comes straight out of your forehead. It's a bone out of your forehead. It's not a bridge. It's just a part yeah. of your forehead that comes down. I don't want that. Cheers, everyone. Thanks. Enjoy the things that, that I paid for you, bunch of bastards. That, that is quite the schnozzle that you've got going on there. <laughs> and, and, and it's not working properly. That's what I'm saying. If you've got a no. nose like this and it's. So I'm on this. I'm on this shit. So anyway, Corrie's been great. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I hope everyone enjoys it. But it's as I say, the scene is being in the rain and the cold and all that has definitely messed with me head a bit. But I'll I'll be over it soon. Go on holiday next week and I'll be in the sun. So hopefully I'll sweat it out. And and I've just realised I never actually said his name. Hugh Coles was the lad who was out here who plays George McFly. Good lad, Hugh. Little shout yeah. out to Hugh. Uh, apparently, best thing in it. Good lad. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so look, Cor- is Corey done now? Finished, uh, <clears throat> uh, finished. Can't give away what happens, but yeah, it was just. I said I'd go back for that for that so special week and sort of, uh, you know, I don't. You, with a character like Harvey, he's an, he's an audible, audible character, and, and, and with that, you want to leave. You want to leave a bit of a, a splash in the water and let the waves go and leave it. You, I mean, you must feel pretty good about that. You must be pretty proud to be like, yeah, I've I've been part of this massive moment, and you must be happy with that. The way it's sort of shaping shaped up for your career and all that kind of thing. Well, no, I'm happy with. The, do you know what the one thing is? I'm happy with is that um, they asked me to do it because going into Connish, it was something I always said. If they asked me, I'd do it. But I never went out mm-hmm. there and said that. Well, I thought if they asked me, I'd do it because being a Northern actor, it's like a, a big tick off the box to say, you know what, I did yeah. Connish, you know, and. Uh, and also at this time, at this time in my life, playing that character, I thought it was good timing. So yeah, um, I am chuffed, and it's weird going into the shops and you're on front cover of all the magazines again. I feel famous. I was like, oh, 
that's me. You know, because all the TV magazines and inside. I had the same. Th- I had the same thing for Death in Paradise. I was just there buying me buying some tea, buying some tea and milk in in the local shop, and I was like, ah, I'm on the front of the radio t- TV Times. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. listen. Also, there's nothing wrong with saying it. It's quite nice, isn't it? You go, oh, hell oh yeah. Over the tire. Oh yeah. 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 I was like, oh yeah, yeah I remember that. that. That was pretty. That, that exactly. reminds me of it. What is it? 1999. <laughs> exactly. No, it's all good, man. It's all good. Did you see? Did you see in the um, the press um, that that Banksy painting? How much it went for? No, which one? I didn't see any of this. Bank, do you know the? Do you know Banksy? He, he, how he does his art? No one knows who he is yeah, and all that. He, yeah. Well, he yeah. did it. He put. He, he had a picture in a frame. Uh, oh, the one like that shredded. Girl, but, yeah, and it half shredded, yeah. right? It yeah. half shredded, and it because it was a shredding machine built into the frame that he'd done to shred. Yeah, and it's, anyway, but it, it shredded. shredded it shredded at the auction. Like literally, they they went right. They exactly. bid on it, and they went. They said how much they were going to pay for it, and then it went. <laughs> but it shredded halfway. Anyway, they put it on sale the other day. It went for eighteen point six million. Wow! Wow! Eighteen point six million for a painting that's half fucking shredded. Get yeah. it right, but I think that's what makes it more of valuable. Course, yeah. I suppose well, in the art world because well, it's, it's iconic, it's a one-off. Well, and it's a piece of performance art, right? I mean, who? When? When has there ever been uh, a piece of art that was destroyed right in front of an auction house, literally after it was bought? That's amazing. A world record. Now, this is what gets to me because I said this at the time, right? Who gets that money? If no one knows who Banksy is, who gets well, that eighteen point six million? And I tell you what, well, when you find out who he is, don't give it him. Keep hold of it for a bit, and you'll soon find out who Banksy is. Yeah. He'll be like, ah, uh, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, me. Uh, that's actually me. In my... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, prove it. Eighteen How million. Does he prove who he is? How does he prove who he is? I could be Banksy. Well, maybe I couldn't, but out of my drawing shit. Well, Paul. Well, I was, I was, I was about to say actually, and it's nice to, to, to make a reveal on our podcast. But um, I'm, I'm actually Banksy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, and I, and I give you I... all the ideas, so we'll split it. <laughs> one, one, one. That's nine million each <laughs> of one That'll shredded do. painting. Hey, well, nine great idea to shred. Point three. <laughs> yeah. nine great point idea three to shred each. that painting, mate. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> well done. Well, there you go. It's worth nine point three million. <laughs> I just built the shredders. What I'm do you know what yeah. I'm saying, though, Ralph? Who gets that money? Who who is Banksy? Right, one. Someone must know because someone's got to collect that dough for him. And you see, well, his accountant, his accountant must know, right? And and the uh, the Inland Revenue must know because if he's just some dude who's like, excuse me, sir, um, can you account for this eighteen million that's just arrived in your account? Well, that's what I'm saying, right? And also, yeah. this is another thing. This is another thing that I'm thinking of. It was doing me head in, right? Who decides, right, I know Banks is famous and all that, but who decides on what is worth a lot of money in art, in the art, because I think the art world is bollocks. This is my, I've had this opinion for ages. Who decides that, say like, you splash a bit of paint on a canvas and go, there you are, 10 million. Who says that's worth money and who says, because I've seen some great pictures you can get for like 20 quid. I just think, how come, do you know what I mean? Who decides what's worth what in the art world? Who is this? Some some bloke who goes, that's worth that. That's worth that. Who is he? Just that, who, what's yeah, willing to hype? People willing it's to hype. pay. It's just hype. Now, do you know what? I've had an idea. What we need to do is have a, a show, a TV show, or something where we get a bit of art that's worth a load of money, and we get yeah. a bit is of this art, art that's done by some kid. Just call it. Some call it. Is this art? Summer. Yeah. And see. See if the and see if the experts take, can tell the difference. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Take the price off and say right. Value each painting. Tell me which is the worth, which is worth the most, which were, and watch them. I bet they get it wrong. I guarantee yeah. it because they don't know. They just join right. in with the bullshit. They go, oh yes, that's, that's amazing. I can see what they've done here. I can see what they've done. If I can feel the texture in the painting, and you can, if you stare at it long enough, you actually become the painting. <laughs> Fuck off with that shit. Hey, I just, Bollocks. I just looked it. I just looked it up. Will right? You know how you're saying who gets what? the money for that Banksy one that was shredded, eighteen million, right? Yeah. Mm. So. When it was bought originally, just before it was shredded at auction, it was bought for one million, right? And then it was shredded, taken away, and then <laughs> sold for eighteen million. But the person who paid that one million to buy it in the first place technically owns that picture. So now it's been shredded. It's worth eighteen million. They've resold it. They've made seventeen million on it 
Doesn't go to Banksy. So they get the money. Yeah, Banksy's just made one million. I quite like that. Look, look at your stunned day, face. That, yeah, you like it because you're like, day. hey, hey, sounds like an investment. I tell you what, I wonder if I could get a deal on that. Oh, right, I could get a good fucking percentage of that. Seriously? I might try. I might become, I might become an art dealer. So I'm moving to Go. this other villa, and I've been in this villa for uh, since since I arrived on Death in Paradise, and I've I've always loved it because it's kind of been like home, but. You know, it, it's you know what it's like. It's a little bit. The view's amazing, but it's a little bit tired inside. But I've not cared. I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. My missus has turned up, and she's like, yeah, I think it's time for a change. Missus is like, we're not living in here anymore. I want somewhere better. I'm like, okay, uh, because you know, the the the, the missus in, in in all walks of life uh, makes the choices. Anyway. So, so when you're there on your own bachelor pad, you, you don't give a shit. You don't need a picture on the wall. Yeah, and exactly. Oh, and don't get me. And don't get me. Yeah. Oh my God, plants everywhere. What is it? Women love a fucking women. Stuff. Women love a plant and a walk. What is it about and birds loving walks? Fucking scatter cushions. I can't get in bed for scatter cushions. Scatter cushions, cushions plants and walks. It takes me I, ten I, minutes to get the cushions off me bed. I know. I can't. And where are you supposed to put them? You put. I go. Where do I put these? She goes. You put them on the floor. And I say, Oh, I sleep. And then in the morning, I go. Now they're all on the floor. And she's like, You put them back on the bed. I'm like, Why? No one comes in here during the day. <laughs> so true. What's the point? Hey, oh, and candles. You're not allowed to fucking light candles. Oh, you can't light that one. What do you mean I can't light a candle? Oh no, mate. It's for look. You just to look good. Yeah. What a load of yeah. bollocks. It's got Have a job. Let it do its job. Have you ever noticed? You, you and I. Um, you know, we've, we've worked together, we did two parts together, but any time, especially in the theatre or whatever, uh, any time you get assigned a dressing room, right? So you, you, they're usually in a corridor, right? So you've got one dressing room and then somebody's dressing room next door, next door, next door. And <laughs> after three months of being in a play, in, I, you can walk into my dressing room and it looks exactly the same as it did the, the day I walked in. There's like, there's like a razor and some shaving foam in the sink and there's like, you know, a computer and like, like my costume's there. It looks exactly the same. It takes me precisely 32 seconds to move out. You're walking exactly within a week of any of any woman's dressing room. My God, there's there's fairy lights, there's <laughs> scarves hanging up, there's cactuses, cactuses everywhere, plants, I everything, I and and I and I do admire it because I'm like, wow, you've really this made looks, and this scented, is lovely. Scented, yeah, scented candles, and you do walk in and go, wow, this really feels like a sort of place home from home, and then I walk back to my bed dressing room with nothing in it. Go, it's like yeah. Harvey's prison cell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. But you can be arsed at the end of the day. Anyway, I, I wanted to tell you, so I'm moving out of here. <coughs> and on. now that I am moving out, I can reveal the... There's some strange decorative choices in this villa. Um, and you were talking about art. This one that I've taken off the wall behind me. I mean, I don't know if this is any good or not. I'm no art critic. And maybe, maybe it's the person who lives here painted it. But, you know, uh, this is on the wall behind me. And it, yeah, it, it, it seems all right. It's it's some sort of some sort of plant flowers, right? Whatever. Okay, fine, fine. And that was that hung up there. But this is the best thing. This is what I wanted to show you. When you walk in the front door over there, the first thing you see staring at you on the wall. <laughs> what is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? Getting down? Oh, I couldn't have him looking at me all day. All day. That's frightening. While I'm sitting, no. on, while I'm sitting on the sofa over there. He's peering at me. That's like something from the Bates Motel. The yeah, eyes I'm moving, all that, watching you in the shower. No idea. <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> it's the weirdest. I mean, I don't know if it's somebody <laughs> who, owns the, who owns the villa, if it's their guy. I don't want to be insulting, but I don't know if it's their granddad or if it's just a painting they like. Oh, but he's a could you imagine, dude. Could you imagine... Could you imagine if it's somebody who owns a villa and it's their self-portrait of their father who passed away sadly last year and I you mean, just completely it's, killed it? It's enti- that is entirely possible, which is why <laughs> I've waited till I'm moving out today. <laughs> let's just you know, let's put this pod out before Ralph moves out and send it to the Caribbean and see if we can find him. <laughs> look at him! Why is he only? Hold on! Look, he's got half. A, look, he's got half a full. Like, where is it? He's got a full beard here, but then like a half a half shaved moustache. Like, that's some creepy shit. Anyway, yeah, it's this guy. Weird. This guy looks around, and that's that is what you see when you open the front door. That's <gasps> the first thing you see, and that's the main reason I'm moving. 
Yeah, but you know, that's what's interesting about art, like it's in the eye of the beholder. It's just that this, 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 the Damien Hirst stuff we were talking about, you know, because like, I was looking up some pictures before. The Damien Hirst, Damien Hirst picture, it's going for stupid money, and it's literally, I think it's nine circles, all different colours. And it's yeah, going for yeah. stupid money, and I just all piss off. And then, but then, did, he's the one who cut a cow in half, didn't he, and put it on this Yeah, yeah, he did a whole series of them. Cow in, half a cow in formaldehyde and a shark, and he like, had a whole series of them. But is it, that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. what is art and what's not art? You know, it's like if I put a dog in custard, right, and just said, right, throw that dog in that custard there, and put a big canvas on the floor, and then let, let the dog just shake itself out like that, and then put it in some other colours, do that, and then go, there you go. Right? Someone yeah. would do that. Say if, say if Damien Hurst did that, they, they call it the Artful Dog or something. Sold two million quid. If I did it, fuck all. The Artful it. Dogger. The Artful yeah. Dogger. The Artful Dogger. Actually, that's more, that's more of a Paddy McGuinness vibe. <laughs> <laughs> the Artful Dogger! I've got to do it! I want to buy the Artful Dogger! What's that picture? Well, there you go. Some people who say, what's that on the wall? That's the Artful but listen, Dogger. But listen, listen, right? If you... Brilliant. <clears throat> a lot of it's about, like... A lot of it's about how you present it, though, isn't it? Like, so if you did, instead of going to me, oh, I'm going to do that, but if you went, oh, do you know what? That's, that's what I'm going to do, and it's going to be real. And then you're going to e enter it to the Turner Prize and go, well, I basically, I took, my, I took a dog off the street because I knew it had to be worth something, some intrinsic value and blah, blah, blah. And that's then, your fucking some... game, that. That's your <laughs> game. That's I've got game. a load of dogs off the street that you can you know. borrow. How, how much custard do you need? <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. what you're getting them for. You're going to pull them all out for an art project, aren't you? Going to cut them all in uh, half, put them in from all those, and say, this is what I do with my street dogs. Half a street dog. Mate. Well, listen, this, this, is, this is what came up on Twitter the other day. This was just something I wanted to talk to you about anyway. And that is, have you seen they've remade Home Alone? Oh, yeah. I saw your tweet and I was like, oh, I'm not getting involved. But I, I don't think, I don't feel like it needs a remake, do you? Well, it's not I don't just feel that. like it All needed a remake. Go, I just put, no, 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 no. Why well, well, did you get by the It's my opinion. It's my, oh, yeah, loads. Well, I got loads of people saying, I agree. But listen, it is a, it is a debate. Not everyone's going to agree. I don't care whether you agree or not. It's my opinion that when mm. you make a film in the 80s of a classic film like that, a Christmas film as well, you can't remake it with today's technology because you cannot leave a 10-year-old at home who would have a fucking mobile phone? <laughs> He'd just ring him and go, we'll be back in a minute, Kevin, the police will be like, fucking hell, it's over, true. the film's done. You can't, technology, it's changed. Five, you can't leave five minutes. We should, make a, we should make our version of a Home Alone film. It'll we'll be two minutes long. It'll last four, yeah, exactly. I made my family Short disappear. Meal. Ring, ring, did it, did it, did it. That's the Nokia ringtone. But, exactly, hello, exactly. right, we're coming to get you. Ah, oh, bollocks. I've jumped exactly. on the bed. Well, get off, you little brick. <laughs> Exactly, I'm watching you on the CCTV cameras we've got in the house now because it's now 2021, not 1985 yeah. or whatever it was. It's just don't. There's some films because I sure. What's your opinion, right? Because is there any that stand out that you think I'm glad they remade that because it was shit or or this this new generation needed to see it? Because I was thinking um, I, there's, there's films couple, I loved. Maybe yeah, go on. The films that I, like the films that I love when I grew up, I was growing up. I understand why they remade them for a different generation, like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, or whatever yeah. really one could. Yeah. But they made it really dark because the yeah. I mean the original was quite dark when he went down that yeah. tunnel and he was going. There's always flowing and growing. I was like, what's going on here? As a kid, a bit weird. <laughs> but G Gene Wilder was a genius, and he was always a bit wacky. But he has to be wacky. I just thought when they remade it. You know, it was, it just didn't have the same sort of innocence for me. Um, but, you know, it's people's opinion for a different generation. I wasn't a fan. To I, I didn't films. particularly watch it. I, I also, I hated the fact that, I think he was, I think it was Freddie Highmore, that little, that, that kid who was in it, who was a genius and an extraordinary actor. The kid from, he was in um, He's Finding in Baseball Neverland. Tell, he's fantastic. He's in Baseball Tell, he's fantastic as Norman he's an Bates. Wait he's Fred, Freddie that. Highmore. Freddie Highmore, he's called. He's British actor, he's a fantastic called. actor. Unbelievable. Did you see him in the Finding Neverland with Johnny Depp yeah, and yeah, Kate Windsor? Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> one of the greatest performances I've ever seen. Incredible. Yeah. But they had him in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory referring to sweets and chocolate collectively as candy. Even though it was set mm. in England and it was set yeah. with an English family. And it's a small detail, but it honestly, it wound me up. So he's like, I just wish I had 
enough money to buy candy. And everybody in England's going, oh, you made this for America then, did you? Couldn't give two exactly. shits about us here. I hated it. I You'd say sweets. I hated it. I know. It made me so angry. But, I mean, it is, but it is a debate for people, and, and it's, it's, a, it's an open talking point. And I just think, you know, be careful what you remake, because it's... It's sometimes I like sitting down at Christmas and watching old movies and go, this is what I watched when I was younger. Yeah. And, and I just think if you make a new one, you take that away a little bit. Um, and, and especially, there was things like the Italian job they remade. They made an American mm-hmm. It was absolute dog shit. And it was like, was it Mark Wahlberg and all that? And it was all, mm-hmm. they pumped it up and, and it just took away from the essence of what it was about. Did, did you, did you ever you know see, I mean? it's, not a, it's not a kid's movie, it's not a Christmas movie, and it, and it was actually remade in the 90s. But one of the things that I actually go... Hmm, that was actually a great remake. Did you ever see The Thomas Crown Affair? Pierce Brosnan? No, I never did. Oh, so it was, um, was it Paul Newman or Steve McQueen? One of the two that were in The Thomas Crown Affair in, I guess, the 60s. And then they did a remake with Pierce Brosnan, and it was absolutely fantastic. Arguably slightly sort of better than the original. Other than that, I can't think of that many many remakes that were better. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. They did Gun in 60 Seconds again, which was just, you know, ridiculous. And then, you know, the... 60 more seconds. This time it's a minute. I understand why they do it. I just think it's laziness. I think just come up with something else, you know. Don't be lazy. And It's it's the same with music. How many songs? They 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 did a Whitney Houston song the other day and modernised it. And I just, it came on the radio and they just took all the soul out of it. And it's one of these... This new style of filming, I, this new style of singing, I call it can't be our singing when they go, oh, so long, no. oh, yeah. so like a dog, literally, <laughs> howling in the fucking night. <laughs> so, 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 so. Can't understand a word they're saying, but it's all like that. Have you heard you what I'm saying? They just can't no, be our absolutely asked. right. Do you remember, because we used to have, we, we were going through a phase, we were going through a male singer-songwriter phase, and the male singer-songwriter style of singing... I'm thinking of like, um, what was he called? Was it Damien Rice? Or not? But, but there was loads of them. And then the style of singing was like, um, uh, you have to sing as though you're uh, trying to hold back tears the whole time. Right. Do you remember that? Yeah, so, yeah. Like that so it was like, there's still a little bit of your taste <laughs> in my mouth. It's like, oh, man up! Man, and she's oh. left! She's oh. left! Man up! Oh. It's not hard to fall. I mean, like oh, oh come exactly. on, man. He, he does that. They were all doing it. He does that a lot. Yeah, Blunt. James, that was James Blunt. Blunt's yeah, full of it. Man. And he's been in the army. They take the piss out of him. James Blunt's <laughs> always on the edge of tears. He's right on the edge. I know. I know. I've got to say, Jackson I quite was... like James Blunt. I quite like yeah, James I, Blunt, though. I don't, I I think don't, he's I don't mind. <laughs> and by the I way, that song was a banger. Beautiful, that one. Uh, <laughs> beautiful, it's true. <laughs> do it. Do it. Again. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful, it's true. <laughs> Pull your face. Do you remember? <laughs> that was do, you remember that was do you remember when when we were doing two bites in the early noughties? And Dido yeah. was massive. And you yeah. used to do, you used no. to do an impression. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a duck farting in the fog. No. <laughs> no. It's all like that. See, your voice is somewhere inside your own face. Let it out, love. It's too. It's still inside somewhere. No. Oh, dear. <laughs> it was true. Oh dear me. Yeah. Oh me. Oh, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, so anyway, what were you saying? <laughs> Have you heard Ad- Adele's no, brought a new song out? Talking I've about not music. heard it yet. I've not heard it yet. You don't need to. It's the same heard. as all the others, really. I mean, I'm not, I'm, not <laughs> <putting it out. laughs> I'm being honest. I can't help but be honest. That's what uh, this pod's about. We have to be honest. Otherwise, we can't just uh, fit in with. Obviously, she's an amazing artist. Obviously, she's so talented, she's worth stupid money. Amazing artist, no doubt, but it's the same thing, different day. For me, it is, I mean, I'm not, Adele is a great artist. Like I said, I'm not saying it's a bad song, it's just, yeah. What we'd love on this podcast is anyone listening to this, like, let us know if you think there are any good remakes. 
Any remakes that you think are actually as good as or better than the original. My shout is the Thomas Crown Affair. Will can't think of one. Anyone who's got any ideas. And that we'll discuss them on our next one. And who knows, maybe me and Will, what we should do possibly is watch the original and then a remake that someone thinks is good and then we'll see. That's we'll not a bad one, shout. Right? That's not yeah, a bad let's shout. Yeah, let's do that. That's let's not do a bad that. So that's the but I don't, well, my, my original point was Home Alone should be left alone, I think, because of the day and age and technology nowadays... Okay. Uh, I, on, I'm inclined man. to agree. I, I didn't want to say, but you said it's about laziness. It's not about laziness, Will. It's about the bottom line. It's about money. Of course, it's about money. You're a big It'll film sell, producer yeah. or a studio, and you go, do you know what? Home Alone was a massive hit. Instead of trying to think of a new thing that's also going to be a massive hit, why not just repackage it, modernize it a little bit, and just chuck it out there? And and it will it will make bank. Of course, but that is laziness as well. That is laziness. Oh, I mean, it is laziness. I mean, You've got. Uh, you you're, you're, right. you're absolutely it's right. Lazy. You're absolutely right. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's it's about money. It's an easy payday for him. Um, I tell you, I tell you what, and this is going to be controversial. Uh, this whole concept now of trying to remake things with black instead of white, or white instead of black, or do you know, because like, because do you know, to try and make it more, it's not making it more equal, which I think is bad, because they're saying now we, we're going to do a black Superman. And I just think, hang on, Superman isn't black. It doesn't matter whether you want to try and even up the balance of the, you know, the equality. That doesn't make it equal. Black Panther. And you couldn't do a White right. Panther. You, you won't go, well, we're going to do a white version of White Panther. It just doesn't want, it's just, you just, just leave it. And I, and I just think now, I don't mind th this, this new Superman story that's come out, that Superman's son is bisexual. And I think, well, what's wrong with that? There's every, there's every chance he could be bisexual. There's been no, it's a new story, a new character. Why couldn't he be bisexual? That's fine. It is interesting about like historically in comics, like he was white because you've got uh, Black Spider Man is is already a thing, but uh, Miles Morales, but Miles Morales in the comics is quite interesting to me how how progressive. Um, uh, Marvel was the comics were even way a long time ago that like they had a multiverse of Spider-Man and Miles Morales is a black kid from from uh, New York who's a Spider-Man and he's going to be I think uh, the next Spider or they're expanding the universe and that's a whole thing so I mean do you think do you think the next Bond should be uh, black or a woman or there's that whole debate going on do you know what I think I, I, I've been thinking about this thing with Bond and uh, particularly a lot about it doesn't bother should it be me a woman a bond. Sh should, should it be a woman sh should it, it be a black a guy on, should, it, should it be whatever but you know what like i under i, I understand you can have a new character intention. called jane bond or something you can't call jane well, well, can... well that's sort of that's sort of what i was it's about to new... say i understand people i understand people's it's intention book, going yeah. oh this this is what i would this is what sh you a know, new would agent. be a good thing right but i'm like you know what the part of Bond is like he's a misogynist. He's kind of a dick. He's the character is kind of a dick by modern standards. He's kind of a dick. Quite so arrogant. Instead, of, yeah, but yeah, idea. but instead, so inst instead of going, let's like let's try and think about a female one. It's like, do you know what? Fuck off. Write something for women. Write something as good as Bond. Oh, as good. That's my point. That's let's, exactly. But, like, but, that, but that's not to say like that's not to say I'd be like. Boo! I won't watch this. It's like, of course, of course, like, I'm, I'm not exactly. going to be like, oh, no, it shouldn't happen. But I just think, actually, it slightly misses the point. Mm. Because what should be happening is for um, black people or, 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 or people of um, uh, minorities or, or, or women or, or, or anything, people who feel marginalised should be represented in good things that are written and created that put them front and centre. I actually exactly. think it's much better to do that than to repurpose some, frankly, I mean, apparently the new film's brilliant, <clears throat> the new Bond film's brilliant, so I, so I hear. Uh, I'm but as a character, as, as a but as a character, he's pretty fucking tired and dated anyway. Like, yeah, why are totally, we trying to totally why are we trying agree. to repur totally why are we agree. trying to repurpose that kind of character for some for, for other people? And instead, why aren't we writing great stuff for yeah. other people that they can make their own and actually have a big franchise? That's like and, and Black Panther being a perfect example of that. But do you know what my wife said, which is very very important. She said. Well, suddenly now these film studios have realised black people go to the cinema in their droves to support mm. because of look at what Black Panther did. So they're thinking, fuck, we need more black films out there because uh, make yeah, them big. So, but they're being lazy again and going, well, let's just make Bond black. Well, and it's just, no, you, like you've seen, you, just write something original. Yeah, and, and do you know what? As your wife says, like, that's fine and great and, and good. Yeah. If filmmakers are going, if filmmakers and producers and studios are going, oh, black people are going to the cinema in their droves to support these films. We should yeah. make more films starring black people. Fantastic, Great. absolutely, Course. exactly. But, but I actually, I, I mean, I couldn't care less if, if if Bond was black. I wouldn't. It wouldn't upset me. Or if, frankly, it wouldn't bother me. It wouldn't like upset me. All, yeah. I couldn't care yeah. less. But I am just a bit like I think would be better off for like being progressive 
if they had if 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 better films were being made with better characters uh, and not sort of a t- frankly a tired old misogynist who's kind of a bit dated now we don't certainly don't need to repurpose that with with some I guy. totally ag- I, to- I totally agree with you Ralph it'd be interesting to have this conversation with um with with, with, a, with a couple of with someone of black lads doing a podcast and go, and go yeah what do you what do you think about it and be, I'd, be love to, I'd love to and do that wouldn't it be I'd fascinating what if they were like actually yeah I'd, I'd, what's the point in having Idris as Bond I'd rather Idris was was off making like <laughs> amazing you what. film um, I'll tell you Let's get Idris on. Idris will go, lads. Idris will go, lads. Will you fuck off? Lads, you're killing me. Shut up. He's getting paid twenty-five million for that. (laughs) Idris, I was being lined up. What are you doing? (laughs) Shut the fuck up, Alf. Will, shut up. What are you doing? Just killed my contract. Uh, Listen, before we go, I've got, I've got something I want to show you before we go, and this is it. Um, Okay. I've been waiting to show you this. Um, um, I'm going to show you the picture, um, and then I'll tell you what it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, go on. There you, there you go. Uh, you see that? Yes, that's you. That's and your illegitimate that's ba- son. That's baby Ralph. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Ralph, who was hey, named Ralph. after you, are from the podcast. No, that's him. Is I met he? him out of. I sat. I met him out of Comic Con. Press, press your button again. Sorry. There we go. Look at him. He's a handsome He's got little great, devil uh, too. He looks a bit he's like a me. He's got my mince. He's got my mince pies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To be fair, you you fathered him, and I gave him the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, she came up to me uh, and she said, "This is Ralph," and I went, "Hello." And I thought, "That's a nice name." She went, "No, the Ralph from the podcast when we named him," and I was like, "Oh, amazing! Have a I forgot about that. That is amazing." Yeah. So there Where did you meet him? What a little cutie! Yeah. Hey, Ralph. I hope they've spelled it right. In Stoke <laughs> Comic Con, I, I did a. I've been doing some Comic Cons. I did a, one in. Um, I did one in Nottingham called uh, MCon, and I did one in in Stoke, and I'm doing one in Telford coming up in November. Uh, these Comic Cons where you go to meet people, um, and uh, yeah, you you have your pictures done and all that sort of stuff, and people go there, thousands of people. It's really good. Um, so um, yeah, and I met, he came. She came up to me and brought him over, uh, and I said, "I'll take this, and next time I speak to Ralph on the pod, Amazing. I'll make sure I show him." Um, Amazing. And, uh, and I'll tell you another thing about these Comic Cons, which is what you mentioned before about love on the spectrum. A lot yeah. of people that go to Comic Cons are on the spectrum. They've got Asperger's or autism or some kind because they, they, they really get into the characters of these sci fi programs and whatever it is you do, they follow them religiously. Yeah. Two Pints fans, they turned up and they had every DVD, pictures. You're going to get a lot of pictures, by the way, because there was a lot of pictures of me and you. And I signed one and I said, send that to Ralph, he'll sign it for you. And if he doesn't, tell him Will said you're a tight bastard. So you're going to get wait, a lot of letters. Just, wait, wait, just to be absolutely clear, you will have got paid for signing those, right? Well, not really. Ah, you're tight bastard. <laughs> You've been paid at a Comic Con. People are queuing up, you're going, me. yeah, it's 15 quid an autograph. Done an autograph and then go, no, yeah, I'll post that to Ralph. I Ralph's don't charge them, the address. company charges. You post it to... <laughs> It's not me, the company. I just turn up and I, I get my feet for being there. Listen, uh, but what I was going to say is, uh, the people that were there, uh, a lot of people have got Asperger's or, or, or autism on the spectrum. And it's such an amazing environment because you can see that how safe they feel there to dress up, be in the moment, yeah. um, get into character, role play, and nobody's there pointing the finger and going, what are them doing, them weirdos? And all that. Do you know what you get yeah, in society? Yeah, exactly. And what's so nice is they have a place where they go, and we had the nicest people, and, they had the ni- and everyone's just lovely, and uh, the amazing characters and these amazing brains just came yeah, alive yeah. in front of me, talked to me, doing impressions of me, and in character, and I met all sorts of different walks of people, and that's what is the best part about it, uh, and why I'm doing more, because you know, it's not what, just, what I, did you, you mean you've done PAs before, and you go yeah. and get paid to sign, but it's not like that, it's just a lovely environment to be in, and these, uh, these people of society who sometimes people frown upon, the nicest people to be around, safe space great from, hearts yeah. and good people. What did you find? Safe space people, from. What did you find that people um, most uh, wanted to talk to you? Because I've done one a few years ago, and uh, the sci-fi guys clean up, of course. Anything Torchwood, Doctor Who, anything that's vaguely sci-fi, there's just cues. And like comedy's not really such a big. So people did sort of want to come and and, and and talk to me a bit, but like, what did you find that people wanted to talk to you most about? Two was it pints, two pints or was it? It's gone really? mad. Ralph, it's changed. The world's changed. When you're back in England, we'll do one together because they're begging us. They say, please bring Ralph next time. I said, I'll have a word with him. It's just, 
They love Mate, the I'm up for it. All right, here we go. This is official on the podcast. The next time, so I'm back in. So people should know this as well. What we're doing here is we haven't spoken to each other for a while, so we're having a catch up on the podcast. Yes. We'll yes. probably try and yeah. squ- we'll probably probably try and squeeze another one in before New Year. But this isn't the start of a well, Christmas. New we've got to do a what? Christmas one, haven't we? Exactly, exactly. But I am back. After I finish this, I am back in the new year and me and Will are going to kick on with our next series and it's going to be massive. And we're going to be in the same room together, which is going to be like, we've not been able to do that for what, two and a bit years? Back uh, in the two pub. Years, I think. I know, we're going to be back in the coming pub up, coming with up with some, some guests or whatever. Yeah. So that's, so that's something to look forward to. But um, we're saying now, New Year, um, we'll go and we'll do at least one, maybe a few of these um, Comic Cons together. So if anyone wants oh, to come oh, see or us, we could, or, we, or we could maybe go on tour or something. We'll, we'll come up, we'll, well, we'll we're try planning, out we're to planning to do people. some. We're planning to do some live dates so you can come and see a podcast live, um, which is basically this, yeah. and just all the stuff that, that gets edited out it's that, more that, fun. We're, not, we're, that we're not allowed to say... Yeah. But you and can then, have a, you can have yeah. a beer with us and we'll have a bit of a laugh exactly. and we'll have some Q and A's. You we'll can ask us questions. Exactly. Yeah. We'll have um, a raffle where so you yeah, get so shit we'll prizes. <laughs> yeah. Now listen, you've ju- I've just found it on my phone. You. <laughs> what? When I did this thing ten years ago, <laughs> so <laughs> somebody drew a pic. Somebody drew a picture of me, right? And they said, "Will you sign this picture?" Now. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna show you this picture. It's ten years old. I it, the picture makes. <laughs> Why am I laughing already? Right. Well, it's not, it wasn't about... a kid who did it. Because if I laugh, I'll feel. No, 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 no. But the thing about the picture is, it was a guy. It was a. It was. A, it, was a, it was a grown man. But this grown man, it was a lovely guy. <laughs> so I drew a picture of you, and I went, "Okay." He said, "Can you sign it?" I went, "Yeah, sure. I'll sign a picture." Right. <laughs> and. <I can't> <laughs> <look at laughs> right. But what was funny yeah, is he's taken. Already. He's taken. He's taken like a photo of me off Google. And it was when I was like, had longish hair, I was doing a play, I was like, had longish hair and like a beard. And he's taking right. a play. But, and in the picture that he's taken off Google, I'm definitely wearing a top. But in the picture he's oh. drawn, I'm definitely not. And by the way, oh. he's, <laughs> he's been very kind. <laughs> Na- nature has built me up in, uh, sorry, he's built me up in places where nature definitely hadn't, right? Have you got right. nipple piercings? No, no, but I am stacked in this picture, honestly. It's like he's drawn a picture of Schwarzenegger and then put my head on the top. But I've only got... That's exactly what he's done. I've only got the head bit and... and <laughs> I've only got the head bit, I'm afraid. And it's a bit creased, but... Look at this. <laughs> Why, are you, Why are your eyes so black? Look at my lips. You look... Do you know what you look like? Look, uh, look you know at your you lips. Like? Do you remember? Do you remember? Like, do you remember on Crime Watch when they used to go? Have you seen this man? A photo <laughs> fit. It looks like a photo fit of me. I know. I know. That's what was so funny. It was several. He's basically embellished everything. If it, if it had been a full size, he would have given me. Of course a huge he has. He's knocking one out yeah. over you. That's why he's giving. He's, he's, he's giving. Yeah. What do, do I, I like? I like Ralph, but I'd like him with bigger lips. And I like. Yeah, exactly. Like this, a six pack. And he's got a massive big knob I can play with yeah. whenever I'm going in bed. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not being funny. I'm not being funny, but um, I'll, I'll take that. I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm good with that. Ask him to send you the full length. Hey. Oh, I don't, know. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Although I do feel a bit of a bad now. I just want to be clear. If anyone draws pictures of us that they want us to sign, we're not going to then laugh about them in the, in the podcast. Oh, yeah, well, hey, listen, I can't promise it. Well, I can't just promise it. I'm an honest person. If I laugh, I laugh. Well, that's how it goes. Uh, like, listen, yeah. I've, I've got to go, man. It's, it's like, it's late. I've got to go to a, I'm going to a 50th birthday party tonight. I am. Um, and, um, yeah. It's, Is uh, it Michelle? It's a lad who I did. No. <laughs> Michelle, I won't have to go anywhere. What is she in the house? Um, I'm, uh, She'd no, I've got to go to East. I've got to go to East Dulwich, so I've got to go all that way to oh, London. And um, mate, it's a lad that's who like I did a what a night with. Right. I did a what a night with uh, with uh, this lad. And when we met, when I met Michelle, it was like twenty three years ago, twenty two years ago. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so hopefully it'll be a reunion. We'll see everyone. And it well, I've asked you about this before. Didn't got... you play an American in a what a night? No, you must be out of your mind. <laughs> what? Oh, they had to change. They had to change some of the script. For me, so they said, um, so the, all the rest of all Americans were like, Hey, um, my name is Rick. Rick's gonna take me to his castle in Macclesfield. <laughs> yeah, I had to be from Macclesfield. They just found somewhere northern. They had to change the script. I'm not do- no, I was an English actor, I was an English guy going over there trying to get a record deal. You see, 
Didn't you? Um, <laughs> didn't you? I remember you telling me it was when United. You were, it was 1999. It was when United won the treble, and on the night that they won That's the it. final one, on stage, you yeah. came up from the bottom of the stage with a big Man United flag, which is completely out of yeah. character. Yeah, and they yeah, could hear you. Everyone in the audience it. could hear you cheering under the stage. I was going mad. I, I, yeah, I came on with the flag and dropped to my knees. Yeah, we, but the, the audience was it was like 100 percent women. All the blokes had said they'd give their tickets. Obviously, said. Love, do you remember this? And me and you were going to the show. United were in the final, so take your fucking mate and get to the pit because I'm watching the <laughs> yeah. match. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. But no, yeah, great. And that, anyway, so yeah, we're going there tonight. So uh, I've got to get on the road. Um, but it's been good to see you, man. And uh, yeah, yeah, you've met you've met little uh, little um, little Ralph. I know, isn't he gorgeous as well? Little cute. I'm, that's made my day actually. Born made from this day. podcast. Can you imagine that? We've got a kid named after you from this pod, which is all good, man. <laughs> I know, I love it. I love it. All right, anyway, mate. Well, listen, all, um, thanks very much. And let's, let's hook up again relatively soon. Um, uh, uh, we'll do try and get a, one or two more before New Year and then um, and then we'll, we'll kick on when I yeah, get Yeah, maybe get a Christmas one in. And next year's going to be exciting. We're going to get together. I've got to go as well because I've got to check my bets because I, I do a little accumulator bet on a Saturday and it's Saturday today. Um, I'll tell you who I did my bets <laughs> okay. with, but we haven't got a betting company online yet or, as a sponsor. So, yeah, uh, no, yeah, next, yeah. Forget, yeah. A, forget, a, bet, you know, forget I, a betting company to come on board. Uh, you know, course. I can tell you about to be fair, where well, I put my accumulators. I'm looking forward with. to, I'm looking forward to Carib sponsoring us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could there you imagine that? But they'd have to fly yeah. us out to the Caribbean, Ralph. I'd have to come out there and do the commercial for them and all that. It'd be a night. Oh, well, we'll, we'll find a way. I'll, I'll squeeze it in. Um, all right, mate. All right, mate. Nice good one. to see you. Have a good one, Really good to see you. Good luck. Good luck with your dogs. Thanks. Enjoy. See you later.